So what we're covering today is journeys. Um, Craig usually goes for a fair bit of preamble. Journeys are XAPI data is is quite a fine grained. You're getting a lot of stuff. You get accessed. Uh, you get comments. All of that. All of that detail. Journeys are a way to try and simplify that and give us a bigger picture of what a user might have done. So say we wanted to find out if somebody had completed an entire course uh, or a piece of learning. That might involve completing a module on one LMS, going to another LMS, completing another module, and then checking in with their manager. And if we had recorded XAPI events for all of these, we could bundle that all together and say once you've done all those things, you've, you've finished, you've graduated. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump straight into Learning Walker show you this firsthand. All right, so this is the same day. Data set we had last week, which is sales data. Essentially, it follows a bunch of salespeople. They join a company, um, they call a few people, and they make some leads. And before they do all that, they do some training. So we want to really follow that journey from joining the company to finishing your training, and then finally being useful and creating a lead. I'm going to start by going to journeys adding a new journey. At the minute, my journey is not active up there. So normally, when a statement comes in, it's run against any journeys that it might apply to, and then we, we check for any users that's hit and update their progress. If the journey is not set to active, so if this little active toggle is gray, that won't happen for any statements. So you'll see what that means in a minute. Call this sales uh, onboarding. Right, the first thing to do is pick where your statements are coming from. So we've only got one store in here, but if I had multiple stores and I only cared about data that was going into one of them, um, I could only pick the one. Now, journeys are a picture of the uh, the overall activity that somebody's doing. That's broken down into single waypoints. A waypoint can be matched by one or more statements. So the first thing that we might be interested in is when people join the company. So I'm going to say joined company. Um, we'll set the verb here to joined. And we'll toggle this waypoint on. So what this means is that as soon as we get a statement come in, with the verb joined, whoever owned that statement will have this particular waypoint ticked off. Because we've got an active waypoint, we can now set the journey to active. And we can recalculate it. So we'll click that little recalculate button. That should start working in the background. When I press recalculate, that goes back over all the statements that I've got historically in the learning record store and works out if anybody has completed that journey from what was already there. And as long as it's active, we'll carry on looking for new statements as well. Once you've made a journey, we need to create a visualization so we can look at the actual output. I'll give this guy a name. There we can see that all of our salespeople have got a big green square underneath waypoint one, which says they've joined the company. So if every one of these people, we found a statement which says that they joined. That's pretty simple. We can get a bit more complicated than this. So the next thing they do after joining is complete a course.
So completing training, the verb is going to be completed. Our data set is quite simple in that I know that there's only one type of statement which has the joined verb. But if I have a lot more data in here and I want to filter that down, I might make it a bit more specific. So I could filter this down to um, Acorn Corp. That's what I call it. Yeah, down here. Um, but I don't need to do that. I know that the only only statements are for joining Acorn Corp. So I'm going to add completed. And I'm going to say that they need to have completed three courses to progress past this waypoint. After that, they need to make a bunch of calls. And let's say that the number of calls is 80. Not sure if that's even, uh, not sure if that's realistic or not, but that seems about right. We'll start them off with 10. And finally, to finish the onboarding, we want them to generate a lead. All right, so it's a bit more complicated now. I've got a couple of options up here for sequential and repeatable. I toggle this first one on, it means that to do the second waypoint, I have to have finished the first waypoint. To do the third waypoint, I have to have finished the second waypoint. If it's off, you can do them in any order, so it doesn't matter what order your statements come in. And this is based on the timestamp in the statement, not the time that the statement arrives in the LRS. So somebody could send a statement to the LRS which said that somebody finished things three weeks ago, and that's three, three weeks ago is the time that we're looking at. Repeatable means that when somebody has finished the entire journey, when they've done all of the waypoints, we log that as a completion, and then we let them start again. So you can see how many times people have done something. So this isn't a particularly repeatable thing. You do your onboarding once, um, but if we want to look at something different, we could use that. Right, so I'm happy with how that looks. I'm going to recalculate. Um, we'll go back here. Right, so now we're starting to get some updated results. This will be in the pro process of recalculating at the minute. So I would still expect everybody to have the joined company complete. Just make sure I didn't make a mistake there. No, it's still joined. So we've got some cache results. I'll just refresh it to clear the cache. And there we go. Everybody has actually finished. That's not actually um, a great indicator of how far along we want people to be. So let's see how many calls people make. Uh, we'll make it so that some people can't actually finish this. All right, so people are making somewhere between 90 um, and 60 calls. So say that like 80 is the cutoff point. If I press recalculate, I throw away all of the progress that I've calculated so far, uh, and we go back to zero. So here, we've thrown away all of those completions. Um, we're now halfway through working out some of the other completions. This will crunch away in the background. If we just give it a minute. It shouldn't take very long, because we don't have all that many statements. This will work for a lot of statements. This will work for up to about, well, it'll work on millions. It will just take a little bit longer. So we've got these these successful people at the top. Um, 
they've completed everything. And so their squares have gone green. They get a little tick to say that the entire journey is finished. And a bit further down, there's the people who haven't quite finished. Uh, it's fairly subtle, but there's a slightly lighter shade of orange on each of these squares to show that they're halfway through this. So one is 72 out of 80 on all some people. So an overview, we've got a really quick glance at who has who is ready, who is ready to do sales, who's finished, um, and who still needs a bit more practice. If you want to see a repeatable journey, so top callers, so we wanted to look at who made 10 calls. We'll let people do this more than once. Set the count to 10, set the verb to called, and we will activate the waypoint and the journey, and we'll recalculate. And into a visualization. How do you add time to a journey to compare how long each person took? That is an interesting question. Um, let me just wrap up this one and we'll dig into that. So at the minute, we store the actual completion uh, of all of the waypoints. So this little tick here shows that they first completed it on the 18th of April. We can go back through their previous completions. For the first time he ever completed doing 10 calls, James Lindbergh here, was the 2nd of April. And then the 4th of May, 10th of May, all up to his, his current attempt where he's on 6 out of 10. All these people have some sort of round number there. To compare how long each person took, um, it's not easy visually. So all we can see is the actual now, completion time. We'd have to dig a bit, a bit deeper to make a visualization out of that. That's something that we might look at adding in a future version, especially if there's a lot of demand for it. For a journey for a frontline leader program. I know in, in when we were looking at the dashboard for what we were able to search, right, is there any way to put them in alphabetical order? I know that yep. that's not a good scenario when you have thousands of people in, like I did, but um, is, is there any kind of sorting mechanism for Okay. Uh, there actually isn't. So that's a, a technical limitation at the minute. We did order them by alphabetically. Um, and in terms of pulling it out of the API, pulling all the results, as soon as you get too many results, having them sorted in the wrong order, or the order that they're not stored becomes very expensive. So it's getting really, really slow. It's fine with this many, um, but above that it gets a bit a bit tricky. Something I would like to look at, but um, yeah, right. just a technical limitation in the minute. But you can filter them down, like you said, by typing in this box here. So if this went off the screen, if this went off the screen, you'd be able to scroll uh, infinitely to find everybody, but you can also filter it down if you've got a really big list. <laughs> yeah. So the last thing that journeys offer, apart from 
this visualization is uh, a callback mechanism. So this might be used as part of a larger integration. And what this does is every time a journey finishes, we send a bunch of information about that person and the route that they took to get there to an endpoint. So if I had an application set up that was ready to send intervention emails, I might look for somebody getting a low score. So if somebody got below 60% on a completion more than three times, that might be a journey. And then I could trigger a callback URL to sendemail.com. It's not actually a, a real endpoint. Which would then receive the information about that person and the courses that they were having difficulty on. Um, and you could use that to either send a message to their tutor or a message directly to them. So that's a that's a kind of, of intervention system, but you could also use it for some sort of positive reinforcement. So if you had a badge uh, issuing system, if somebody had completed all the criteria for a badge, then you could use this to tell the badge system uh, this person has earned a badge and then give it to them. Or anything else, anything you can think of really. But it does require a bit more development on the uh, the endpoint side. No, oh, that was very good. Thing. So yeah, that pretty much wraps journeys up. Food for thought. <laughs> Anything? Any questions that you've got there? Yeah. So there's a lot that you can do with journeys. Um, but it's, it's a case of finding out what you actually want to do um, and then implementing it. The, the sticking points at the minute are setting them up. So it can be done programmatically with an API. If you have a, a source of journeys, so say you have an LMS um, which doesn't track completion over multiple courses but does know uh, what all the course IDs are, you might build a system to create a journey for that from all those course IDs. So Learning Locker can then find out when somebody's completed all of the onboarding courses. But yeah, there's plenty of possibilities. Um, just a bit of work to implement them. I'm doing this on my phone, so I can't type. And if you want any questions, we're always at the end of an email and happy to help. That's okay. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. For